Well, hello everybody, it's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you are greatly blessed. Well, we're going to go straight to the scripture today. We're going to read from Luke chapter 24, verse 36. Now, preceding this is the story of the two disciples who'd walked to Emmaus after the death of Jesus. They're very downcast. And Jesus appeared to them, but they didn't recognize him. And eventually when they did recognize him, it says their hearts were aflame and they raced all the way back to Jerusalem and they met with the disciples and they were, told, and they were telling them. And as they were discussing this, Jesus appears to all of them. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. And he said to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I, myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate in their presence. This is a fabulous passage of scripture. Jesus had to do some convincing when he rose from the dead. Jesus had to grow them in their formation, in their discipleship, in their followership. And so Jesus comes along and he needs to, because it would have been shocking, wouldn't it? That here they are, they would have known that he was dead. They saw the brutality of their day, the way people were killed. They heard the stories if they had not even watched at a very long distance and those that had been close. Uh, here they were. And so, so Jesus had to grow them in their spiritual life. Now, in all of us, we have to grow in our spiritual depth. We're not called to just be church attenders. We're rather, we're called into this relationship with God where we grow. Now in our ministry, our mission statement, the mission statement, if you said, what am I trying to do? It would be this. Our mission is to reach those who do not connect with the church so that they come into an ever deepening relationship with Jesus Christ. Our mission is to reach those who do not connect with the church so that they come into an ever deepening relationship uh, with God. Now you might stop and say to yourself, I'm stopping you say to yourself, so this is about the disconnected. Well, my father went to church every week. Uh, he never missed. And he went his whole life. He took us to church. That's where I got my faith from. But in many ways, my father would have told you that he was disconnected. He was someone who turned up. He was a good man. And he lived according to the church's teaching, but in a sense, he felt often very disconnected from God, from Jesus in his life. Uh, see, see, the church brings us to God. And that's the reason when we're disconnected from the church, uh, as in the people of God, we can often be disconnected from God himself because people bring us to God. That's how God has always established it. No one told my father, according to him, that there was a, there was a deeper, ever deepening relationship that he could grow in. No one told him that. No one told him that his discipleship, his followership of Jesus was something that had to go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, see, it was what I was taught by priests. It's what I was taught by my mentors years ago that, it, that going to church, just turning up is not good enough. Now, don't hear me wrong and to hear me saying, oh, don't go to church. I didn't say that. What I said was that it's about a deeper relationship. So that in our relationship with God, we pray about the things we pray about it, then we about things we experience, then we go out and live it, and then we know it more deeply, and then we pray about it, and then we live it, and then we know it more deeply. See, our relationship with God is about going deeper and deeper and deeper. And so when we have experiences, we pray, we reflect, we talk with God, and then we begin to live according to that. Like so today, I'm talking to you about going deeper. And so you I, take that away, begin to pray about that. And then as you begin to live this dynamic of I can go deeper, then in time you become, begin to know that. And then what happens in time, you begin to pray even more about that. And guess what? Then you begin to live at a deeper level and then you know it deeper and it goes deeper and deeper and deeper. It's, it's a little bit like my relationship with Rosemary. I've been married for 38 years. Back, back in the day when we first got married, I read some books on being married. I'd seen other people that had been married. Uh, 
and, and I talked to God about it. I prayed about it. Um, and then when I began to live it, you know what happened in time? I began to know it. And then as I began to see and understand Rosemary and me and who we were, I then began to pray about that even more. And as I began to talk to God more about it in my life and I began to live it, I began to know it more. And so over time, our relationship has got deeper and deeper. And I know things today that I was so naive about all those years ago. At a whole nother, deeper, deeper, more dynamic level is our relationship with God. And so what we see here is Jesus is coming along and he's been with them for three years. And now look at him. He comes along. He says, hey, don't be frightened. Don't be frightened. Don't be troubled. Um, he says, you know, don't let fears arise within your hearts. Um, don't let doubts arise within your hearts. He says, I'm not a ghost. Touch me. Feel me. See me. Experience me. And then what he says, he says, uh, have you got something to eat? And they bring him some fish. You don't get the impression. He says, uh, can you feed me a meal? He just wants to eat something so they can see this guy who was dead is actually eating. Look at that. Look at that. And so what Jesus is doing is Jesus is discipling them. Imagine how having, as they begin to pray and to think about that and as they begin to live the reality of I've seen him, they know it more deeply in the conviction and the belief. And as they begin to talk to God about that and then they live it more, it goes deeper and deeper. And so it is with our whole life. We see that in the, in, in, in the, in the lives of the saints and the holy, holy men and women of God through history. So, so your relationship with God is meant to be this deeper experience. And the resurrection of Jesus is Jesus wants us to know him and to know the reality of him. Now, as we live on this side of the resurrection, right, is that now we come before God and we begin to pray about that. Lord, what does it mean for you to be resurrected in me? What does resurrection, if, if, if sin and, and difficulty and struggle is, it has been defeated and yet I live in the midst of sin and difficulty and struggle, what does that mean for my life? How do I go and live today going out into the strains and the struggles and the, and the things that I have in life knowing that you are victorious? And as you pray and as you begin to live, you begin to realise this sense of peace, this sense of knowledge of God, the presence of God. And, and the more you begin to experience that, guess what you do? You begin to pray about it more. And as you begin to pray about it, it goes deeper and deeper. Uh, I think one of the great tragedies of so many people is we just turn up to church or we just think, I believe in God and that's enough. And it's not. It's not. And I thank God every day for the priests. I thank God every day for the mentors in my life, the men and women in my life who said to me, don't just... Don't just be about believing in God. Be in a relationship with God that takes you deeper and allow yourself to be discipled. Allow Jesus to do what he did here. He came along and he says, don't be frightened. Don't doubt. Touch me. Give me something to eat. Watch what you're seeing. I'm not a ghost. Would they have been changed by that experience? Now, we'd all say, well, if that happened to me, of course, that'd be true. But in its own way, we can, begin, we can experience, in our own way, we can begin to experience this deeper reality and this deeper conversation called prayer that then changes the way we live and then changes what we know. That's discipleship going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Imagine if you lived like that every day. Come on, everybody, walk with me and let's together go deeper in our relationship with God. And then when you turn up to church, then when you practice the sacraments, you will experience a richness and a knowledge and an understanding at a level that was so much deeper than you could have possibly before because you've gone deeper, because you've lived it, you know it more deeply, Jesus alive in your life. Loving Father, I thank you today that you call us to go deeper, deeper that you call us to live by the power of the resurrection deeper and deeper and deeper with you. May that be a reality in our life. And Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all, everybody. And don't forget, wherever you are, God is never far from you.